Chapter 2, Physical Properties and Physical Changes. <clears throat> We're talking about matter. This really matters, so pay attention. Uh, I know, bad joke. Anyway, matter can be classified. See, scientists, we classify everything because it helps us understand the world around us. So we're going to classify matter into its physical properties and its physical changes. And then in the next video, I'm going to talk about matter's chemical properties, how we classify it by its chemical properties, and what chemical changes are. And the chemical changes part is really important because that's where the real heart of chemistry lies. But first, let's start about physical properties. The physical properties of matter describe the characteristics of a substance. Another good way to think about it is like the personality of a substance. So let's talk about viscosity. Viscosity is described as a measure of the resistance to flow. So if you take a look at this picture right here, this there's one test tube on the far left that shows, you know, hey, look, I have a very low viscosity. I'm going to drip right out of this test tube. No big deal. Just pour it right out. Whereas the test tube on the right, that has a super high viscosity and it doesn't want to come out of that test tube at all. And I don't know, maybe that's petroleum jelly. But viscosity describes a measure of the resistance to flow. Now, if you were to warm any of these substances up, the viscosity goes down because it's easier to pour. Think about maple syrup. If you have maple syrup fresh out of the refrigerator, you try to put it on your pancakes, it doesn't want to flow very well. But if you warm that maple syrup up in the microwave for about, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds, it pours really nicely. So viscosity does depend on temperature. Boiling point is also a physical property. For every single substance, substance which is something that is pure so for everything that's pure it has a unique boiling point and you need to know the boiling point of water so water's boiling point is 100 degrees celsius yes that's a zero or in fahrenheit that stupid system it's 212 degrees fahrenheit or in the system you don't know about yet it's 373 kelvin we'll discuss more what the kelvin system is later you do need to know these numbers make sure you memorize the boiling point of water and if you didn't know what a substance is based on its boiling point you can have a really good idea of identifying it because substances have unique boiling points. It describes the characteristic of a boiling point. The melting point of a substance, that number is exactly the same thing as the freezing point. It all depends on the direction. So if you are warming something up, it's going to melt. And that magic number is exactly the same thing as the freezing number, but in this case, you're cooling down. So for water, and yes, these are numbers you need to know, water freezes and melts at zero degrees Celsius. So if you are cooling something down, it's going to freeze at zero, and if you're warming it up, it's going to melt at zero. Now, the cool thing about zero degrees Celsius is water can simultaneously be a liquid and a solid. So if you have a cooler full of ice and water, you automatically know the temperature. It's going to be zero degrees Celsius because that's the only number where water can exist simultaneously as a liquid and a solid. And, uh, well, let's see, in the stupid system, that's 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And in the Kelvin system, which we'll get to, it's 273 Kelvin. Now, a substance's malleability describes whether or not it can be pounded into sheets without breaking. Some common substances... Sorry about that. Some common substances that we would say are malleable would be gold... That's um, iron, by the way. <laughs> um, I don't know where the iron went, but I'll go ahead and write it. Aluminum, silver, and lead. Those are all very malleable. Can be pounded into sheets without breaking. 
ductile describes the ability to pull a wire, um, make the metal, pull the metal into a wire without breaking it. This is known as the tensile strength of a wire. Some metals that you can pull into wires include gold. That's how we make like gold jewelries because we can pull them into different shapes. Platinum, those are the most ductile by the way. Then we have copper, iron, nickel, manganese, silver, indium, osmium, tungsten, which is used in light bulbs, tallium, rhenium, tin, and zirconium. You can describe a substance based on its color and on its hardness. Um, we, we use what's called a Mohr scale to describe a substance's hardness. Diamonds, incredibly hard. Some things we are so soft, like um, the mineral talc, you can actually scratch it with your fingernail. Sodium metal, I wouldn't recommend scratching it with your fingernail, but it's so soft you can cut it with a butter knife or even a pair of forceps. Another physical property would be odor. Some things are really stinky, like sulfur. Um, I think sulfur used to be called brimstone, but man, this stuff smells. Determine a physical property by looking at its texture. Is it smooth or is it rough? Another physical property is conductivity. Does it allow electricity or heat to flow through it very easily? Now in class, what we're going to be doing is when we talk about matter, we'll be practicing whether or not you can identify something as matter's physical properties. Now we're going to talk about physical changes. Then in the next video, chemical properties, chemical changes, but for now, let's focus on physical changes. In a physical change, there is no change in the composition, or you could say the little ball arrangement of the molecule does not change. It's hard to see the Mickey Mouse arrangement structure in this solid because they're kind of hidden in there, so you really can't see it. But if you look at this one right here, so you've got one little ball, one little ball, one big ball. So there's the Mickey Mouse structure of water. And this water molecule is still a water molecule, even though it goes from a solid to a liquid. And if we heat it up even more, we can change it to a gas. So changes of state are physical changes. Changes of state. See, if you go from Indiana to Michigan, you're still you. You've changed states, but you're still you. There's no change in the composition. So our states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, if a substance moves through those, it's a physical change. It might appear different, but it is not different. Physical changes describes, again, how different substances transfer themselves from different states of matter. So solids to liquids to gases. Now you should know water is the oddball. I don't know why it's always used for an example, but it is. But notice please that solid water has actually more space in it than liquid water. Every other substance that would be reversed, the liquid would have less space between the molecules than the solid. This is the reason water floats. It's just weird. But as you go from a solid to a liquid to a gas, these substances don't change. The molecular structure stays the same. Things that you can do which will change how the substance looks, but it doesn't change the composition. If you cut something, you paint something, 
if you melt it. Melting then is defined as going from a solid to a liquid. No change in the composition. The melting point of water again is, that's right, 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees if Celsius. If you freeze something, again, it does not change what it is. Freezing is defined as going from a liquid to a solid. Water's freezing point is 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. If something evaporates, it's still the same substance. Evaporation then is going from a liquid to a gas, but there's no change in the composition. Boiling. Boiling is still the same substance. In boiling then, you are still going from a liquid to a gas, but no change in the composition. Boiling and evaporation are very similar between the two. Evaporation happens by chance. The molecules knock each other out is basically what happens. Boop, out of the liquid. They hit each other, boop, one comes out. Boiling is actually caused by a change in temperature which causes then the molecules to leave the liquid. Now dissolving is also a physical change. If you put something in water, like sugar, when you make Kool-Aid, as you can clearly see, the molecule itself does not change. It might like look like it's disappeared, but if you've ever had Kool-Aid, you can, you know, you can still taste the sugar, the water is still there. There's no change in the composition. Now, if you put table salt in water, I've heard people say this is a chemical change. It is not. There's a couple videos out there that say that. It is not a chemical change. See, you have ions in this nice little lattice structure like table salt does this. You have ions before and when you put it in the water, you still have ions. The ions do separate, that's true, but there's still ions. If you've ever gargled with salt water before, you know, you got strep throat, your throat hurts, you gargle with salt water, it's still salt water in the water. You can clearly taste the salt. There's no change in its composition. Sublimation. That one's a cool one because this one goes straight from solid to gas. This would be carbon dioxide, also known as dry ice. And it goes straight from a solid to a gas. It doesn't go through the liquid state at all. Sublimation. Um, snow will sublimate. It'll go st um, straight from solid hunks of snow right into the gaseous stage, which is partly how we get fog and gives us those nice little fog delays. These are vocab words that you need to know. I've covered them, but here they are in a nutshell to review. So what do you do when you go from a gas to a solid? What's that called? Oh, I don't think I discussed this one, to be honest. Solidification. I've heard it called um, deposition also, but I kind of like solidification because it, you, it's got that word solid in it. What do you call it when you go from a solid directly to a gas? Sublimation. Need to know these. Yeah, I know. Part of the problem with Chem A is there's a huge vocabulary thing you got to learn to do. Okay, as we go from solid to liquid, what is that called? Melting. Liquid to solid, freezing. Liquid to gas, evaporation or vaporization. It is not boiling. I've heard people say, okay, it's boiling. Well, no, the process is called vaporization. Gas to liquid. I don't think it covered this one. Condensation. 
Remember, in a physical change, there is absolutely no change in the composition of the molecular structure. It stays the same. So, up next, we're going to talk about chemical changes and chemical properties.